Good morning. Uh, welcome to our uh, service today. Uh, welcome to all who are watching online and all who are here uh, in the sanctuary. It's the feast today of the baptism of the Lord, in which we celebrate the creative power of God to bring life out of chaos, and how we receive this within ourselves as we say yes in our baptisms to sharing the life of the one who in his baptism said yes to sharing ours. Those who are watching at home, if you'd like a written order of service, uh, you can find that in the sermon section of our website. Let's bow our heads in prayer as we begin. Let's, let's pray. Our God of light and love, we thank you so much for the gift of this day which we can share together in worshiping you. We pray that your loving purposes would be accomplished in each of our lives, and that through us your light would spread in your world. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our uh, hymns today uh, have uh, themes of light and water and baptism and uh, our Lord's identifying in love with us. And we'll begin with a hymn that speaks about the awesome God of light that we love. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. The words are on our screen and I invite all who are able to stand as we sing this together. Continue with our greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let's say together the collect for the baptism of the Lord. 
Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, keep your children born of water and the Spirit, faithful to their calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 43rd chapter beginning at the first verse. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 29. We'll say it responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount, Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the fame, flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips and strip the, the forests forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all, all are crying, crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord, the Lord sits, sits enthroned, enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord, the Lord shall, shall give his people, people the blessing of peace. peace. Together, God, God of mystery and power, open, open our, our eyes, eyes to the flame of your love and open our ears to the thunder of your justice that we may receive your gifts of blessing and peace to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now have our second reading from Holy Scripture. Reading from Acts, chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. Second reading. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid hands on them, and they receive the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I now invite all who are able to stand as we sing together our gradual hymn, Wind Upon the Waters. according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Well, we're now in the epiphany season of the church. Christmas has come and gone. The Christ child was born in Bethlehem. Jesus' family has escaped to Egypt to avoid the slaughter of the innocents by Herod. They've returned to Nazareth where Jesus grew up. Now we jump ahead several years and in today's gospel we hear about Jesus' baptism, the revelation of him as the Son of God, an epiphany to those who are around him. In our short epistle we heard that the Samaritans are being mentioned as one of the first converts to the way which became Christianity. And while preparing my sermon, I had an epiphany about the Samaritans. To better understand that, I'm gonna to have to give you a little brief biblical history geography lesson, so I hope I don't put anybody to sleep. I'll make it brief. Following the Exodus, the 12 tribes of Israel invaded, occupied, and settled in the region known as Cana. And this was where the original father of faith, Abraham, came from. It was his homeland. These 12 tribes became a single kingdom 
under the rules of first King Saul, then King David, and then King Solomon. And a city near the center of that kingdom was called Samaria, and it was the original capital. Now after King Solomon died, internal strife divided the kingdom into two separate entities. There was a northern kingdom that was, uh, that was called Israel, and that included 10 of the 12 tribes, and the southern kingdom that was called Judah, and it included two tribes, the tribes of Benjamin and Judah. Later, much later, several hundred years later, the northern kingdom, Israel, was conquered by the Assyrians. Now they took captive and deported some members of those northern tribes, but the remnant ended up being dispersed and became absorbed into the surrounding pagan cultures. Now there was a small, nearly invisible remnant that continued to maintain the Jewish identity and they generally migrated to the south, to the kingdom of Judah. A few hundred years later, the southern kingdom was conquered by the Babylonian Empire, who came in and they destroyed the temple built by Solomon, and they took most of the people uh, captive and took them back to Babylon. And then, about a hundred years later, under King Darius, I think it was, an administrator and prophet, Nehemiah, was able to come from Babylon and bring a remnant back to Jerusalem to rebuild its walls and gates. So now, when these exiles returned, a split occurred between those who had remained and those who had been in exile. Each group made, said that they they kept the true religion of Israel. And this split ended up in Galilee in the north, Samaria in the middle, and Judah to the south. So what was one kingdom now is actually ended up being three. Now, Galilee, the one in the north, had been separated from Judah for centuries. And their inhabitants were considered to be country bumpkins They'd, because they'd lost touch with strict religious practices. And hence, in the term of the New Testament, one of the times when Jesus was in Jerusalem, we heard the term from the Pharisees, or we even hear from one of his disciples, I think it was Philip, said, can anything good come from Galilee? So, as I mentioned earlier, Samaria as part of the Northern Kingdom had been the historical core before the split. But when it, when, uh, when it did fall, as I mentioned, Judah became the sanctuary for the remnant and the exiles. Now, Samaritans were considered half-breeds, some having married, intermarried outside their faith and to people who were not Jews. So there, Religion, these people who had stayed, had been sort of uh, influenced by pagan rituals and were not considered to be pure. So there became this controversy, like who has the true faith? Well, it ended up Judah in the south, who contained the new capital, Jerusalem, won out their religion was considered the pure or kosher religion. And yes, and thus we hear the term Jews. That came from Judah, where they were living. And that's the term used in John's gospel. Every time he talks about the Jews, he's referring to people from Judah who considered themselves the holders of the pure religion. But in spite of their colored reputation as being contaminated by the outside world and not practicing true religion, Samaritans played a very prominent role during the ministry of Jesus and in the early church. We all remember the story about the Samaritan woman at the well. She believed that Jesus was Messiah 
and a whole village ended up believing in Jesus. We hear Jesus used the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan is the one, not a Jewish priest and not a Jewish Levite, which would be sort of like a deacon. None of them showed any mercy to the man who had been robbed and left beside of the road. And then we hear in the epistle this morning that the early church sent the big guns, Peter and John, to visit Samaritans to pray for them. If Samaria, Samaria was the first place evangelized outside of Jerusalem following the day of Pentecost. And we also know that Samaritans were some of the first people to respond to the call of John the Baptist. And thus they were saying in the epistle this morning, that these people knew the um, baptism of John, but they had not heard about the baptism by the Holy Spirit. So this was an epiphany for the early church. And they recognized that God was able to work beyond traditional Jewish boundaries and into greater Israel. And eventually this sets up God working outside of Israel and into what we know today as, as Turkey and Greece when Paul started his um, ministry and evangelism. Now in the gospel reading, we learn that John the Baptist has been promising that the Messiah would come. And before starting his own ministry, Jesus felt it was very important for him to come and be baptized by John. So quoting from the gospel, it says, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. For those present, seeing this sign and hearing God's word, they would never forget this event. This was an epiphany for them. This was when it was exposed to them, they had an epiphany that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Now Jesus' baptism took place on the Jordan River. And before the service, I think for some of you that may have tuned in earlier, there were several pictures and the video of the Jordan River. And about five years ago, uh, my wife and I made a very brief visit to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem and the area around the Sea of Galilee. And we saw the Jordan River. And the Jordan River starts north of the Sea of Galilee and eventually enters into the Dead Sea. And it runs throughout the lands that I just described, like all of Israel. And it plays a prominent role in biblical history. The Jordan River has a very spiritual significance that sets it aside from other rivers in the area. It's significant for Jewish people because the tribes of Israel under the leadership of Joshua crossed it to enter the promised land. It's also significant because of some of the uh, great stories of the prophets Elijah and Elijah and it was in the River Jordan that under uh, Elijah's direction, a Syrian general named Naaman was healed of leprosy after he washed himself seven times in the Jordan River. And today, a large part of its whole length, it's about over 300 kilometers long, it forms a border between Israel and Jordan to the north and the West Bank and Jordan in the south. The familiar folk song, Michael Rowe, The Boat Ashore, calls the River Jordan deep and wide, but it's neither. As we saw in the video, through some of its length, it looks like a creek. And over most of it, it's less than 10 meters wide and less than two meters deep. And the place where John preached and baptized is believed to be on the Jordan River south of the Sea of Galilee and on the east bank opposite Jericho where the tribes originally came into um, what we now know as Israel. 
crossing the Jordan because of all these things has become a metaphor for when we step out in faith and move towards God. When we move from the known to the unknown, trusting that God is going to be with us. This was true for the Israelites as they crossed the Jordan to enter the promised land. It was true for those who came from a variety of places, from John the Baptist in the wilderness, for those who came to receive a baptism for repentance. It was true for Jesus after his time in the wilderness and before the start of his ministry. It's true for all of us at our baptism as we receive the Holy Spirit. And it can be true for us as adults when we have opportunities to renew our faith. These movements are crossing the Jordan, bring us closer to God and allow us to feel his presence as we travel on our faith journey. During times when we really dedicate ourselves to God, we can experience the presence of God and feel a reassurance similar to that mentioned in our first reading from Isaiah today. I'm not sure if you paid attention, but those verses are used in that praise song, Be Not Afraid, written by John Michael Talbot. And in that song it says, You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. And it goes on. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. And during these current times of uncertainty in the world, the rampant spread of the Omicron variant, the fear of Russian invasion in the Ukraine, the awareness of widespread oppression of human rights. I pray that all of us during this season of Epiphany will gain a new understanding of the meaning of the chorus of that song that says, be not afraid, I go before you always. Come follow me and I will give you rest. Amen. In non-COVID years, we often have a uh, baptism uh, on this feast day, and that uh, always gives us an opportunity to reaffirm our baptismal uh, covenant, and we are going to take that opportunity uh, today, even though we don't have a, uh, a baptism taking place. So I invite uh, those who are able, both at home and uh, here in the sanctuary, to stand as we make this commitment and reaffirm our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? In God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in God the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, 
in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect sustain and renew the life of the earth well, with God's help. And now for the prayers of the people, I invite us to be seated or kneel as is our preference. Ready for the baptism of the Lord. Celebrate the coming of the one who brings the reign of God to all people. Let us pray for the world God loves, the church God calls, and all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, and responding, hear our prayer. God of light, through water and word, you shine your light into the darkness of our lives. We give thanks for this incredible gift. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, your love comes in spite of our animosity. We bring reconciliation to those who are divided. We pray for better relations between Canada and its native peoples. Strengthen us to be peacemakers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you walk with us through the challenges which surround us. Wash away our anxiety by your promise, promised presence, and let us free from despair. Glory in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mission, in baptism you unify yourself with our world and bring your reign into being. Keep us from seeing our love as a hiding place. Motivate us to infuse the world with your justice. Glory in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, there is nothing that separates us from your love, inspires us to bring your help to the sick your encouragement to the discouraged, your promise to the dying, especially those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, all that exists from you and for you, enable us to trust your baptismal promise and serve the hurting world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who shines in the darkness, receive your prayers and the prayers of our hearts in the name of the one who is your light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer in response to COVID-19, Lord of the years. As we stand at the gate of the new year, we approach the with anxiety. The vulnerability, exhaustion, fear, and loss of experience in so many ways since the start of the pandemic is still with us. But we also approach the new year with hope. Hope born in the fragility of the Christ-like God. So in this hope, we us to live in trust, to love well, to care for your creation with gentleness, and to know that you hold us and the whole world upon your hand. The love, love and cherish, cherish in, the in the name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God has spoken peace into our hearts, we have that gift of peace to share with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And let's greet each other with the peace of Christ. So at this time, we pause to offer to God our time, talents, and treasure. Uh, in our parish family, one way that we share our treasure is through the uh, offerings that we give to St. Paul's. I'd like to thank everybody uh, who contributed uh, in 2021, and uh, thank you those who are continuing to give in 2022. Uh, to help us to carry out the mission of spreading the light of the love of the Lord through our words and our deeds. Uh, some of you who are sharing today's service in person may be brought uh, offerings uh, for the offering plate, which uh, is, I think it's maybe in the credenza, but it is there, or it is on top. Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, if you uh, brought an offering uh, but forgot to put it in there, you could do that uh, before you leave. Uh, but uh, uh, there are many other ways to give financially to St. Paul's, and we're going to listen now to our virtual choir sing as an anthem, Wash, O God, Our Sons and Daughters, while our screen shows a slide that mentions the other ways that we can support uh, and so participate in the mission God has given us. Now let's share together the prayer over the gifts. God of life and freedom, we celebrate the revelation of Jesus as the Christ who makes all creation new. Accept all we offer you this day and make us new in him who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And uh, we are using the second Eucharistic prayer today.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who placed their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, do it in memory of me. Now, sorry, we ask you. Uh, remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life. And that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. We now have the joy of sharing communion physically for some of us and spiritually for all of us. To receive communion physically, uh, we're going to have you come up uh, when 
our sides persons uh, indicate that it's your rose turn. Uh, please do uh, maintain social distancing as you, as you come up. And uh, once you've sanitized your hands, uh, then uh, uh, please just come up to uh, Bob who will um, place the wafer uh, in your hand. Then I ask that you don't partake right in front of Bob, but that you go to whichever side you uh, came from and you can partake there. Uh, and then return down the side aisle uh, and go to your pew. So I now invite everyone to share these gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Despise for sake, cause 
let's say together the prayer after communion. Gracious God, lover of all, by this sacrament you make us one family in Christ, your Son, one in the sharing of his body and blood, one in the communion of his spirit. Help us grow in love for one another and come to the full maturity of the body of Christ. We ask this in his name. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated and we'll look at some announcements together. Uh, yesterday at St. Paul's we committed uh, Francesca Giancotti into our Lord's uh, everlasting arms. Rest eternal, grant her, Francesca, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Amen. Uh, we pray for comfort for Jennifer, for Melissa, and all the family in their bereavement. Another beloved member of our parish family has gone to be with the Lord, uh, Val Murray, for many years our prayer chain coordinator and uh, our official hugger, uh, passed into eternal life on Monday. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers are with Sandy and Alan and the rest of the family in their grief. Uh, there will be a family service celebrating Val's life at a later period. We have a COVID update, uh, probably not unexpected, um, that uh, today's service is the last in-person service or gathering at St. Paul's for at least the next three weeks uh, due to the skyrocketing number of Omicron cases of COVID-19 and the terrible strain uh, that this uh, uh, could put on our healthcare workers and system. Uh, the Archbishop, following the recommendation of the Diocesan COVID-19 Task Force, uh, has decided that uh, we need to take this action so that we're doing all in our power not to add to their burden. Uh, the hope is that uh, the cases will go down uh, quickly enough for in-person services to resume in February. So uh, please do stay tuned. Of course, we will be communicating that as we get closer to that date. Um, that doesn't affect our virtual coffee time, though. So our virtual coffee time is on today at 11.30 via Zoom. Uh, the link that you'll need to participate uh, is uh, in our order of service, which I mentioned uh, is in, uh, that you can find in the uh, sermon section of our website. I also sent that out uh, in an e email to the parish uh, yesterday. All ministry leaders are asked to submit a year-end report for the annual meeting, uh, and uh, the deadline for that is actually this Monday, so t uh, tomorrow. Uh, please do get them in uh, as close to that deadline as you are able. We uh, have midweek uh, video services uh, posted on Facebook and YouTube uh, on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. And uh, the first service of 2022 will be posted this Thursday. To read about uh, all this happening at St. Paul's, please do check out our weekly news bulletin and our monthly issue of uh, Living Waters. Uh, in this case, it's actually uh, uh, for both December and January. Uh, you can find those in the news section of our website. Uh, also, I mentioned uh, that I do send out uh, weekly emails to the parish 
and there's also a weekly newsletter that uh, comes out Sunday mornings. If you're not receiving these two, that means we don't have you on our email list, so please do let me know and we'll make sure we correct that. And uh, now I'll end this part of the service with a formal announcement uh, to satisfy the diocesan can canon. So this is uh, a notice of the annual meeting of parishioners, and this is the wording that we're supposed to use. We didn't just come up with this <laughs> ourselves. Uh, notice is hereby given that the annual meeting of parishioners will be held online on the 30th day of January 2022 at 11.30 a.m., at which time all baptized persons who are of the full age of 16 years and regularly attend services of worship in this parish and receive communion or otherwise regularly receive the administrations of the clergy of this parish are entitled to attend. In order to attend the annual meeting, parishioners must complete the solemn declaration in the weekly news bulletin and in my weekly email to the parish uh, are two spots that you can find that. Uh, and to send uh, this declaration to the office at uh, office at stpaulscalgary.ca by 12 noon on January 27th. Once a uh, parishioner is pre-registered, Zoom login details will be provided. And uh, once again, I, I should mention that this is actually what the diocese has uh, said we need to do. So this isn't our own, uh, we didn't come up with this on our own. Uh, this is what uh, we are required to do. If you wish to attend the annual meeting but don't have a device that would allow you to do so, please contact the office by 12 noon on January 20th. And uh, that's dated this ninth day of January, 2022, by me. <laughs> and uh, so please do, uh, if you would like to participate in that annual meeting, uh, please do follow those instructions. If they're as clear as mud, please do phone and let, let us know, and we will try and, and uh, make it clear. Now let's stand, and speaking of illumination, we'll sing about the light of our Lord's love and our closing hymn, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Oh, 
shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, Spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Set for your work, Lord, and let there be light. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.